So let's just start the implementation of graphs. In order to implement graph, we uh, we can use, let's say if you're using C++, then you can use vectors, or if you're using uh, Java, then you can use ArrayList. Apart from that, we will require a linked list. And we can use structs uh, if you are using C++. We can use classes in both C++ and Java. This will be kind of like a prerequisite in order to implement graphs. First of all, we are going to implement graphs in kind of very sophisticated manner. We'll implement it via using the structs or the classes concepts. Uh, we'll, have, we'll be having separate functions. Then I'll show you one more representation, uh, which is kind of, uh, I would say, more appreciated in the competitive programming world because we'll be like coding uh, the whole graph in a very, very simple and I would say very much efficient way. So without any further delay, let's just start. So here you can see I have already made a new file, uh, it's just in CLS.cpp, right? You can avoid the rest of the boilerplate code uh, that's uh, in my template. If you want to see that how I made my template, you can check out the template video, right? Okay. So first of all, what we are going to do, we can uh, use class, we can write graph, right? Now we can give it some public properties uh, because we don't want to go a lot in private and protected kind of a thing, right? So first of all, we can have the number of vertices, so int v then we need to have an array that is going to have a linked list, right? Okay. So how do you make a general array? Uh, you can use it uh, with a pointer, right? You can represent it with a pointer. What it represents, it's an integer array. Whereas, what do we want? We, we want an array of list. So what we can have is std list and that list is of integer type, right? So this is something that you can use. Right. So this will be an array of list. So this array is going to point to a corresponding list. Right. Okay. Now we can have a graph constructor. Right. In this graph constructor, I can pass uh, the number of vertices and I can do this of V is equal to V. Right. Like I'm like implementing uh, it using this. This is not mandatory. This pointer is not mandatory, but you can definitely use it. Right. And then you can do ARR is equals to new. Uh, then how do you make an integer array? It's like int and then the corresponding side, but instead of int, it will be something like list of int, right? This is something that we are going to have, and this is going to complete our corresponding constructor. Then we can have a function void add h, right? We can add an h from u to v, right? If you have a weight, then you can keep a weight parameter and instead of just making an integer list, we can have a list of pair, right? But currently we are having just this and we can keep one uh, parameter bool by direction and we can give it a default value. Uh, let's say true that if nothing passed, then we will consider it a bidirectional graph. Okay. Cool. Now what you can do, you can go at uh, ARR, so let's say this of ARR at U and you can do, let's say list dot push back v and if bidirectional is true uh, one second if bidirectional is true then you need to do this of arr at v dot push back u right so if you will pass bidirectional false then it will be a directed graph otherwise we will always consider it to be a undirected graph and this is how you can add a edge to your corresponding graph. It is as simple as that. And then you can write a function void display. We can use it in order to display our corresponding, I would say, graph. So I can use for auto, I would say, and edges, edge inside, I would say, this of ARR, right? Because it will be a, a list. Right, and we can then, uh, like what, what this is going, this is going to go to one by one all of the list. And uh, then we can say, first of all, um, or let's just do one thing. Let's say, for int i equals to zero, i less than v, let's say this of v, i plus plus. First of all, let's just print v. So, std c out i, right. And then maybe we can have something like this. That is the vertices associated with it. Then for auto, I would say neighbor in this of arr at i, we can do std c out 
uh, neighbor and then we can do this as well and then we can print a new line we can then print a new line okay now what you can do you can create a graph here so let's just create a graph object g right and let's say we can take a user input so int v that is the number of vertices so i can take a user input v right and then i can like just pass it to the constructor then i can take a user input of e that is the number of edges c in e right and then while e minus minus i get i will be having two vertices so int u comma v and then what we can do i can do g dot add edge this is add edge u comma v this is something that we can do and then uh, we can just call g dot display okay so let's say we are going to have uh, let's say seven vertices so zero is connected to let's say one one is connected to let's say uh, seven vertices and let's say we are having four five six seven eight edges so zero is connected to one one is let's say connected to two two is connected to three then three is again connected to zero then one is connected to four uh, and four is connected to five four is four is connected to six and five is connected to six i believe these are eight uh, yes they are and now if you will try to run it okay so we are expecting so here is a semicolon missing we have put a semicolon anything else no i believe let's run it again okay so this is our corresponding i would say graph let's just uh, make it a bit more neat so let's say we can have it something like this sorry um, okay uh, ooh, and this is this let's just run it again okay so this square bracket is representing a vertex and 0 is connected to 1 and 3 1 is connected to 0 2 and 4 2 is connected to 1 and 3 3 is connected to 1 0 4 is connected to 1 5 6 5 is connected to 4 6 6 is connected to 4 5 right so this is a kind of an adjacency list kind of a representation right so you can see the graph that we were like looking at uh, in our tutorial so if you will kind of look at this so it is kind of very much similar to this i'll just change the corresponding names okay but if you are in a coding contest or somewhere do you need to write this much in order to implement a graph that's not required so what you can do uh, let's make a new file let's say graph quick implementation right now what you can do you can just make a global let just give me a moment you can just make a global a vector right you can make a vector of vector you can make a vector of list whatever you feel like so let's say we will make a list as i said there will be some space optimizations with list but again uh, it de like depends on how much the space optimization is and is it worth the effort or not so graph right and uh, what we can do is this is something that you can do here let me copy the code for the input so this is the code for the input so instead of creating a graph object what you can do you can do graph dot resize of size uh, let's say v right and uh, everywhere there will be a list of integer right this is something that you can do right uh, you can also take the input of uh, the number of edges then instead of doing g dot add edge what you can do you can do graph of u dot pushback v like you know already know if you are implementing a bidirectional graph or not then do graph of u dot 
pushed back uh, v this should be u right you already know if you know that it's a directional graph then just do u to v and or maybe v to u whatever you feel like like you don't have to like write all the clean code if you are like want to have a very fast implementation right so this is something that you can use in order to uh, i would say take the input and then you can just write a function void display right and then you can do something like for uh, int i equals to zero i less than graph dot size i plus plus then you can do for um, auto and element in graph at i you can do std c out element and you can do something like this then you can do std c out new line and before everything you can print the vertex so std c out this can be something like this i then again this and there can be an arrow here as well okay cool so instead of calling g dot display we will call the display function right because it's a global uh, vector of list you don't need to like pass anything right uh, let me see if everything seems correct okay seems cool let's just see if it works so let me clean the uh, output file let's just keep the input file same as it is so if we try to run it okay uh, there is some semicolon issue here let's just resolve it and see again zero connected to one comma three right one connected to zero to four so what we can do let's just copy and uh, paste the output here to see if both of them works equally good or not so this is the output from this file right and uh, let's just go back to our initial implementation let's just run this file it gave us this so let's just see zero connected to one three one connected to zero two four two connected to one three two zero one five six four six four five see it works right so you can just try it this much during your taking like while taking the input of the edge then only you can like add your corresponding edges no need to like, like specifically write a function and if you want to display you can display otherwise whatever operations you want to do with your graph that we are going to like see a lot of algorithms in the upcoming lecture you can uh, do as it is right so this is something that you can use in order to uh, adjacency list based uh, i would say implementation is adjacency matrix a very different one uh, i believe this is going to be really easy adjacency matrix dot cpp i believe this is going to be fairly easy let's just copy the input code this is the input now as soon as you take the v value here we can make a vector of a vector of int graph right it will be having v vertices the vector of int of v comma zero everything initialized by automatically zero if there comes an edge what you can do graph of u v equals to one and before that just do stdc in u v at u v also do one and if it's a like you know if it's a bidirectional graph or not you can do v to u also as one and then you can write your own display function in order to print this whole matrix right now what you will do with incidence matrix okay now in an incidence matrix what you are going to do you are going to have a matrix so let's say if we go for incidence matrix dot cpp right let me copy the code from here now this time you are going to make this vector after taking the input of edges because the columns are going to represent edges okay now as soon as you took the input of the edge as soon as you took the input that there is an edge from u to v right so what you are going to do now you have you need to have every edge named specifically right you need to have every edge named specifically so instead of instead of having the columns as a vector only how about how about you can name them 
uh, you can make them, uh, let's say, a map or an unordered map. And uh, or let's say I can make them std map of a pair, right? So std pair of int comma int, right? So this will be coming for pair and again an int. So see what we are doing because we want to name the column specifically, right? So instead of having the column to be represented like a like a vector, you can use this thing in order to represent everything uh, like a map, right? Or also if you want to represent it just like a vector, you don't want to complicate things a bit, then you can assume you can assume that when the input is coming, when the input is coming, so let's say the eth edge is going to represent it by the eth column. So instead of a while loop, what you can do for int i equals to zero, i less than e, i plus plus. And then using this, i is your now column. i is the column because that is the number that you have given to your edge. So what you can do, you can do graph of u comma i equals to one and graph of v i equals to one that's it right if you will try to print this graph so let's say for int i equals to zero i less than v I plus plus for int i equals to zero i less than e i plus plus okay to std c out graph at i j space and then a new line this okay cool if you'll try to run it uh undeclared identifier j okay so this should be j Okay, see, now every column that you are able to see is having only two ones, not more than that, right? So simple incidence metrics. So we, we have implemented all the different representations of graph. Now I would like to give you a task. How about if you can change this adjacency list based approach to an adjacency hash map or an adjacency map kind of approach? I can give you a hint. You just need to replace this list with a map, hash map, set, unordered set, whatever you feel like is going to be a better representation for you and try to implement the adjacency map version of adjacency list, right? We have already discussed about the time complexity of each of these representations. I can tell you by my experience that adjacency list is something that we are going to use the most. So this representation you can keep handy, but if like uh, somewhere someone asks you to represent graphs, I believe you should use this cleaner way to implement the graph. So I hope this representation is clear to you all. In the further sessions, uh, we are going to discuss about a lot of graph based algorithms and a, a lot of graph based theory that we, we will be coding as well. We'll be taking up problems from different websites and uh, doing a lot of practice and making a better grip on graph theory. So I hope this uh, session was fruitful for you. If you enjoyed the session, then don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon so that you can get a notification whenever I'm going to put a video. And if you found the video useful, then please share it with your friends so that we can reach to as many people as possible. And if you have any doubts, don't forget to drop that in, in the comment section. The whole community is there to help you. We will also try to help you and uh, we will meet in the next session. Till then, take care, guys. Bye-bye and love you all.